The pristine waters of the Lord Howe Island Marine Park have remained relatively untouched and are teeming with tropical and temperate species. Among these is the Galapagos whaler shark. These small reef sharks, often around 1.5 metres in length, roam the waters inside and outside the lagoons of Lord Howe Island. A team from the University of Western Australia Oceans Institute, in partnership with the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and Australian Marine Parks, has spent the last two years tagging and tracking the Galapagos sharks within the Lord Howe Island Marine Park, trying to distinguish their movement patterns and how they interact around fishing vessels. The research is improving our understanding of this species, including the depths they inhabit and how temperature affects their movements. My name is Jonathan Mitchell and I'm uh, conducting my studies at the University of Western Australia in Perth. Our project here on Lord Howe Island is involving studying Galapagos sharks, so we want to learn more about the movement patterns of this species and also, um, in particular, how they're interacting with fishing vessels. There's limited understanding and limited literature on this species around the world, but they seem to be found at kind of isolated offshore seamounts all around the world, both in the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. Um, so this, the feature of Lord Howe Island, the fact that it's a very isolated island um, in the Tasman Sea suggests that it's a unique kind of habitat that, that would suit their ecology in terms of focusing on these isolated areas. The population of Galapagos sharks around Lord Howe Island is uh, currently unknown and it's something we're working on as part of the project. It is common to see up to 50 individuals sometimes when you're snorkeling around the boat as they're very curious and will often approach vessels um, as soon as you stop. So in terms of the overall population size, it's possible that it's larger than 1,000 individuals. Um, but we're, st yeah, we're still collecting data to try and answer that question. We started this project in January 2018, which was when we initially deployed our 12 listing stations and also tagged the 30 sharks with acoustic tags. And then every year in January, we're going to be coming back and collecting the listing stations to actually download the detection data from them and then redeploy them so we can continually collect data for approximately four or five years in total. So of the 30 sharks we tagged, we've got data for 25 of them, and the majority of them tend to be only detected by one or two of the listing stations, which suggests they're generally spending most of their time in a small area. However, interestingly, one of the sharks we tagged did move between the Lord Howe shelf and also and over to the Bulls Pyramid shelf. Um, so it's kind of about a 20 kilometre distance between those two areas. So that was one of the key objectives we wanted to identify, if there is movement between those two areas. So my favourite thing about these sharks is particularly their curious nature. So as I said before, it's very common for them to come and investigate vessels, which obviously, from a, someone who's interested in the marine environment, it's amazing to go and enter the water and see these sharks. They'll come right up to you to try and investigate you. They're never kind of aggressive, they're always just curious, looking at you and trying to find out what you are. And it's, it's just an amazing experience to be in the water with sometimes yeah, 30 or 50 sharks at one time in the beautiful clear water here at Lord Howe.